that always calms me down. So I wanted to do a little vlog and uh, I wanted to be as relaxed as possible to do it. I think it's a little easier for me to speak my mind that way. And so <clears throat> what I wanted to actually talk about was the word homeless and how the judgment that we assign others is judgment that we assign ourselves. I really think if you point the finger um, or if you, you know, judge somebody else's life, and all of us are doing it all of the time, but I think that it's going to come back to bite you. could be a very subtle, minor way that you don't even really notice. So, the word homeless, think about it. Just think about it for a second. How would you like to be told you have never had a home? Or uh, perhaps I should go about that a different way. How about... How about... What if you just wake up one day and you ponder to yourself? You know, I've never really felt that I've had a home because in a moment of vulnerable honesty, you're thinking to yourself that you're not really comfortable in your own, what you call home. Home is comfort. Well, it should be where you're comfortable. Shouldn't it? I mean, otherwise, it's just, it could be, you know, a building, a structure, uh, a dwelling, something in which you reside in, but uh, that's it at that point. If you're not even comfortable to be yourself and your own, what you call home, then you don't have a home. There's a more brunt way of putting it. So, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the word homeless. A lot of time. And I, uh, one thing that kind of got me started thinking about it was George Carlin's views and ideas on, uh, on how they should change the name of the condition. He says, home is an abstract feeling. Uh, these people should be called houseless. I think he was, was he the first to, because to, I know houseless has, has come around as a pretty commonly used word. Uh, but, yeah, the issue is... <clears throat> I think that syllables themselves and words carry with them almost the, the weight of how they've been used historically and um, another word that comes to mind is the n-word rapper Akala from the grime scene in the UK uh, had this to say on that he said that blood soaked word rappers still use all it really shows is we still self-abuse. That was the word that was used to kill. Kelso Cochrane and Emmett Till. That was the word that the conscience eased and made people pleased that hung you from trees. That was the word that let the whips crack. No matter what you say, you can't take it back. And I can, and he kind of goes on from there, but... Um, I mean, everybody knows this. That's a very serious word, but ultimately, it's syllable sounds that we're hearing and seeing symbols on the internet and however else we're kind of receiving. But there's an element to it, I think, that is energetic. 
again it could be if somebody were to say the word in front of you a very offensive word or something a slur or something and I guess in this case we're talking about the n-word I think that again those syllables carry weight and how I'm kind of trying to tie this all together in my ongoing quest to talk about things that are difficult to talk about because I think it's a it's a skill and uh, something that's worth strengthening you know um, the way that I'm trying to tie this all together is that the n-word is a terrible racial slur but I am making the argument that the h-word homeless is a terrible classist slur if you will um, and I think people use it all the time to be frank I think we see somebody sitting down in public and many of us are going to make the judgment immediately homeless and avert your eyes or something you know, uh, never mind. You know it's not even human it's very degradating uh, you know it's it, it, it rips people's humanity right out of them just like the n-word did and again going all the way back to the beginning I'm talking about judgment coming back to the bite us we're all being very cruel to the poor and the needy basically yeah yes they get there for different reasons they might have had drug issues who's to say whether you know did they want to have drug issues or did life kind of just happen that way was it you know unfortunate was it their choice I mean all this stuff kind of comes up and people are there for different reasons and I'm sure people have been in and out and you know I got a job again I got an apartment and then I went homeless again and everything like nobody's damned to that uh, indefinitely so that's just something to ponder on I wanted to make another vlog I hope it was compelling because I'm honestly trying to get to a point where like I don't need no jump cuts I don't need nothing it's just an attention span you know other than that adios see you another time